Yes, hello, welcome to On The Bench with all the best in local sport from your region. Well, in tonight's show, we're featuring women's football, who better to join us to discuss the topic, none other than Scunthorpe and Bottisford ladies football team manager and assistant manager, Mandy Cook and Joe Morehouse. Hello to both of you. Hello. Mm-hmm. Let's talk about uh, ladies football. Uh, first of all, Mandy, some more about the club. Tell us yep. some more about it. The club was formed in 1990. Um, Joe and myself were players. Uh, we then took over the run of that because it was it was going to fold, so we didn't want that to happen. We obviously continued playing from sort of 1991, and we're here ever since. You were there right at the helm then, Joe? Yes, yes, we were. Um, it was advertised for a team um, to be formed in Scunthorpe, um, and we both attended. Um, and as I say, from then on, really, we were quite heavily involved, um, and then took over a year later, um, and we moved from there, really. How far has it moved on from those early days? Well, we were very sort of raw. We had no kit. Um, technically, it was you know just meet up and play, um, and we eventually got in a league. We played some friendlies first, um, and then we were into a league the following season um, because you have to go through a normal application process. Is that the league you're in now? Um, no, mm. no. This was sort of the bottom tier, <laughs> if you like. We've um, progressed. We've had three or four promotions since then, so we've, yeah. had, we've had the glory. Good. To be fair. Yeah. So, what league are you in at the moment? We're playing in the North East Regional League, Premier Division, which... Um, so how would that compare with the men's game? Possibly Division 1. Um, we used to be in the Combination League, which we had put down maybe as a championship in the men's game. Um, a good standard, probably where we would like to be back. Um, mm. But we're in the Premier Division, which, again, is sort of two or three tiers in the women's football pyramid. You've got your county leagues, and you've got Division 2, 1, and then the Premier Division in the regional so how easy is it, or how difficult is it for you now having to stand on the touchline doing the managing compared with those days when you used to be playing? <laughs> it's very hard, yeah, really. Um, but I think we're both realistic <laughs> that we're not as fit as we used to be, um, as well. much as we'd <laughs> like to be out there. <laughs> too, um, too many injuries. <laughs> how has yeah. it been going this season? We've had a good season. Um, I think the main objective um, was for us to survive in this division. Um, we've got a lot of newbies. We had six people making their debuts at the start of the season that had never played in open age women's football, which was massive when we was up against teams, established teams like York City, Whitley Bay, mm. Wakefield. Um, so, you know, they may not, we will end up all being well. We'll, we'll survive. We're in the middle of the table. Um, two teams dropped out, so that's taken the pressure off a little Just bit. one thing there you mentioned, uh, and it's just occurred to me, do you align yourself with Scunthorpe United, the men's the club, the football club. Yep. I know she mentioned York <coughs> City there as well. Is that how you start? Do you look to really put yourself alongside the local professional team? Yeah, we were Scunthorpe United ladies. We got took under the wing by the men um, a couple of years into it when they wanted grants, etc. Um, and we, w- we won all our honours under that badge, to be fair. We were very successful. We went through two and a half, three seasons of being, not being beaten in anything. Um, and then they didn't want to sponsor us anymore, um, obviously, financially. We were only after a couple of thousand a year, which is what we had the gentleman's agreement. And they then decided that they didn't have the money to do that. So we had to get another sponsor and Botsford Town took us under their wing. So oh, we've, okay. we now play from Birch Park under, but we still wanted to keep the name, obviously, Scunthorpe as well. Never so. easy when you want money. We'll talk some more about that yeah. in a little while at the sponsorship. Okay. Well, our production crew recently visited the club to find out more. Let's have a look. This is where the hard work starts. We're here on a cold night. So come and support the ladies football team. Now football and ladies football in particular have become massive just lately. Now down here in Bottisford at the Frederick Goff School to find out a little bit more and check out behind the scenes. Hi I'm Mandy Cook from School Club and Bottisford Ladies Football Club. The football club was formed in 1990 and I took over running. I was only a player then and I took over running it then in 1991 and it's just developed from there. We train on 4G uh, and then obviously play on grass but Performance, brilliant, um, a lot better because you can control the movement of the ball better. It, it makes the players work harder, certainly in skills and things like that. So for us, absolutely brilliant. We want to go as high as we possibly can. We're realistic, I think, in the women's game. We used to be in the combination league. People retired. We've got young girls coming through that are only sort of juniors, but naive, but because of their enthusiasm, I want them to progress and play as much as they can really, at the highest standard. My name's Sue 
Hunsley. I'm the coach for Scunthorpe and Bottesford Ladies. I'm 29 years of age and I'm from Scunthorpe. I joined the club when I was 14, uh, come through the youth rank and I went into the reserves and then started in the first team when I was 16. Uh, in many, many aspects, really from personality to confidence, um, to working with different people, um, experience, also developed me as a coach on what I'm doing today. Um, so I just feel generally football is growing in the women's industry that fast. Um, yeah, it's helped me so much. Um, my short term targets are to develop young players coming through uh, with good facilities, uh, good coaching skills, um, experience, which I've had 20 odd years of experience, um, and to provide them with a safe environment um, and them to enjoy football. Um, hi, my name is Rebecca Hornsey and I play centre midfield. My name is Anna Ward, I'm club captain and I'm centre half. I've been playing for the team now for about six years, perhaps seven. And I joined in about July, I was time for about six, seven years. We've really well as a team, we, we make sure you know, we're a group of friends, we're not just on the pitch, we don't just see each other on the pitch, we, you know, we have banter, we stay after games for a while, you know, chit chat, just, you know, just chill out. And, uh, yeah, we, we meet up occasionally, once every few weeks, everybody gets together, um, we've got all sorts of different ages, different backgrounds, but it's very good spirit. I think we've, we've both played for different teams now where we can both bring different things to the team, and at the minute it's a very young squad. So I think it's it's going to help us to help them. Gonna... Yeah, we definitely bring different experiences, different walks of life and play. Um, but as I say, we've got a lot of youngsters who we like to think we're certainly going down on to and guide them along. So. I think, I mean, this season was a big season for stability, getting a foothold in the league, you know, kind of staying up, making sure we're here next season. Uh, I think the next couple of years we keep the same squad, introduce a few more new players. Yeah, I think I think we can push. I think we can push. Yeah, we're certainly as high as we can. Really, I mean, the county cup's a big event for us, so we're always trying to push for the final for that and just keep taking place in the league. Really. That's it. The training session's over. The ladies have been put through the paces. The manager's done their bit. All that can happen now is the performance on the pitch. We'll see what happens. Listen, join your local club. Get involved. Mandy and Joe are with me from Scunthorpe and Bodice for the ladies football team. I think, Mandy, from the BT we've just been looking at there, it does appear you're a team very much in transition at the moment. Is that right? It is, yeah. We've, um, we've had a lot of newbies into the team, um, youngsters that have come up into open age. So they've gone through the ranks up to under 16 and then come through. Some girls haven't even played open age 11 aside football before this season. Like I say, we had six girls that were on the debut start of the season. So, yeah, a tough. Tough initiation test for them, I think, um, but I think they're, they're showing willing and they're very enthusiastic. So. And Joe, you've been rolling since, what, 1990? That's right. Uh, yeah. How difficult is it? Like the men's game, you'll have ups and downs, won't you? But you've got to sustain it. Those players go, new yeah, players come in. That's how right. How difficult has that been? It is difficult because um, a lot of the new ones that are coming through now um, obviously will go to university as well, so we lose players there. Mm. Um, we sometimes lose some to other teams, you know, if, if they're sort of moving away, etc. Um, and obviously we lost a lot to retirement, but um, I say bringing the new ones through, the whole reason of having the other teams is to feed those in. And Where's the image of ladies football at the moment? Because it has come on a long way, hasn't it? Oh yeah, it's progressed. I think it's good. I think um, and the FA have sort of got, got into it now um, with the Women's Super League. I think there's a lot more press. Uh, a lot more games for people to see, which is encouraging because what drove us on is the fact that we wanted people to be able to play. We couldn't have that at our age. We didn't start playing till we was in our 20s. 20s yeah. um, so really the main thing is to make sure that the girls can say to play football and have got access okay, to it. Okay, listen, we're going to talk some more about sponsorship and yeah. idols and just where the ladies game is at the moment in a little while. So okay. stay with us. Great. Well, let's go to the break now. Uh, taking us closer is our new feature. It's Jim Gale's Home Workouts. Hi, welcome to Jim Gale's Home Workouts. Over this fourth series, we're gonna go through a number of workouts to hit different aspects of fitness and also to hit different areas of your body. Before we get started, we need to go through some health and safety. First of all, always warm up at the start and always cool down at the end. Also, 
I'll be asking you to use some equipment at home, so don't use anything too heavy and never push yourselves too hard. Okay, let's get started. Today we're gonna do a cool down. Make sure you do one of these after every workout. We're running on the spot. Make sure for this one, it's not too strenuous. You are just cooling down. So as we actually get through the, each exercise, you're gonna slow down a little bit. So when you get halfway through, really start to just slow it down and control the movement. Second one we're gonna do is a side lunge. Reaching down, make sure the back stays straight and the chest stays up. And just keep breathing again. It's not too strenuous, but you should feel it stretch a little bit as you come down towards the heel and just keep breathing. Last one is gonna be arm circles. So get the arms out straight to the side, circling, and make it a little bit wider with every circle. So eventually, you end up with wide circles and then bring it back the other way. So they're gonna get smaller and smaller and smaller. And that's your cool down. Stingrays are in blue, the caps are in white, and we are underway here on a Tuesday evening at the Hull Arena. Three. Three. Well, now there's been a turnover and Ricks has got Portwood with him. Ricks takes it all the way, feeds Portwood and the short-handed goal for the Capitals. Welcome back to On The Bench. Hope you enjoyed Jim Gale's home workout. Well, in this half of the show, we're going to be chatting more women's football with Joe and Mandy and bringing you the ice hockey highlights from the whole Stingrays. Before that, though, let's bring you right up to date with the latest sporting results from around the region in Team Talk. Well, let's start with football in the Premier League. Hull City were held to a goal of straw at bottom place Leicester City. Tom Huddleston sent off in that game as well. Meanwhile, in League One, Scunthorpe United also drew this time one all with Sheffield United. Both sides, they will have felt they should have taken three points from the game with draws leaving them just above the relegation zone as we enter really the closing stages of the season. Well, in the conference, frustration for Paul Hurst. His Grimsby side were cruising, it seemed, to a 2-0 victory away at Chester when the home team, much improved, hit back to force a two-all draw. That result means Grimsby stay fourth, having squandered the chance to go within three points of top spot. No joy, though, for conference rivals Lincoln City. They remain in 12th spot after losing 2-0 at home to relegation place Welling. And it was left there for North Ferriby United, thankfully to provide the region's only win this week. They beat Hensford 3-1 to climb to 11th in the table. Well, only one result in rugby, Market Raisin and Louth won their semi-final cup match against Dilkiston by 17 points to 15. And with no lacrosse result this week, that completes our Team Talk Roundup for now. Well, let's turn to ice hockey. And it was a busy week indeed for the whole Stingrays injury hit squad. They played three league matches in seven days. All three games were decided by a single goal, with the Stingrays being on the end of two defeats against Cardiff and Coventry. That made the game at Edinburgh all the more important to the Stingrays' chances of making the playoff finals. The Stingrays are in blue, the Caps are in white, and we are underway here on a Tuesday evening at the Hull Arena. Frederick. Well, now there's been a turnover, and Ricks has got Portwood with him. Ricks takes it all the way, feeds Portwood, and the short-handed goal for the Capitals. Opportunity side of the goal, Boyd, follow-up, Naslund, saved by Brown, real scramble here. And it's there from King, 2-0 Capitals. It's Barron skating it away, and he's taking it all the way through. What a goal! Lauren Barron from end-to-end, -end and around David Brown. And the Edinburgh Capitals have gone 3-0 up in the first period. Full highlights on the Stingrays YouTube channel tomorrow. Osman, oh, Osman! There's a highlight. And there's a way back into the game for the whole Stingrays. Dominic Osman, it is his 10th of the season. Six of those have been power play goals. Lows on all the way around. Out in front, Tanaka! Ricks with the face-off win, but Galbraith read it, moves in menacingly. Galbraith! Oh, he's lifted in above Heidlovsky! How did he find room for that? Collins to Nasland. Yarolin. On for Nasland. Opportunity! What a goal! What a response! Collins! Caps moving in. Ricks with the big shot. Brown with the save, and he covers up just in time as Emerson ends up in the goal. Nice pass to Frederick. Needs a little bit of support. 
Gets it. What a goal! Lozon! That was the pass he needed. And Lozon buried it. Still Galbraith. Save made. Rebound. Opportunity back at Oh, and it sits in the crease. And the whistle goes. And the Caps were going to clear it anyway. But they couldn't have come much closer. Two ticks left on the clock. Five minutes of overtime here. And Lozon wins the draw. It's back with Omar Pasha. And everything slows down. Ross and Tanaka couldn't take it across the blue line. Nasland, this is dangerous. Nasland, what an opportunity. Nasland, Brown saves. And the puck is knocked to the corner. So we will go to a penalty shootout. Just like two previous Stingrays and Caps games have this season. With the visiting team shooting first, it's Ricks against Brown. And it's a pad save by David Brown. Can he put the Stingrays in front as he goes up against Thomas Heidlowski? Yes, he can! Heidlowski was way out of his crease. Portwood opened the scoring in the first period. Oh, what a backhanded finish that is. He's already scored one on the night. And he just went for the shot. And there was no way past. Down. He's left the puck behind. And so he doesn't even get his shot away. My goodness. And he can end it with a goal right here. He's done just that. The Stingrays move into seventh place in the table. And the race for the playoff places has taken a turn in the whole Stingrays favour. It's a really excellent comeback there from the Stingrays, wasn't it? Coming back from 3-0 down in the first period to win on penalties, leaving them in contention for the playoffs. My guest this evening, Mandy and Joe from the Scunthorpe and Bottice with ladies football team. Uh, have you been involved in any real fight backs like that, Mandy? Can yeah. you think of any? Uh, we had a few, um, which I think if you were 3-0 down at half time, you get a round from your manager, which was us, and <laughs> you go out there and you can pull it back. We've, we've done that before, 5-4, and he's going through. Yesterday, we was in the County Cup semi-final, three minutes into injury time of extra time, and we equalised to take it to penalties. Terrific. So 2-2, two, two, we lost on penalties, but... Oh, not so terrific. No, no, yeah. but that we, we pulled it back twice. We was 1-0 down, then we pulled it back. Literally, we were seconds away from going out, but we took him the next step, so... Brilliant. For a young side, we did all right. So what about it, Joe? You're running a football team. You've got potential there. How do you actually take that to the next level? How do you shape those girls and, and take them up to the next level and improve it? I think mainly um, we found that you've got to be obviously committed. You've got to turn up week in, week out, um, do some extra training yourselves. Um, from our perspective, we've obviously got to do our homework on the teams that we're playing, ensure that um, we know their strengths, you know, uh, you know, gauge that against our sort of strengths and weaknesses. Um, and I think it's mainly keeping the team together. Keeping that squad together is the hardest, but we managed to do it, to do that. Yeah. And we just take them through to the next level, you know, the, the, the with us all the way. Are there some big egos there? Not no, now, no. we used to have. No, we used to have, and I think, you know, you but sort of weed them win. out. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, but, yeah, we're there now. Just looking at, uh, look at some uh, sort of illustrations here, magazines uh, promoting the, the women's game. I mean, it really has come on a long way, hasn't it? What, oh, yeah. Is, is, it glam is, the, is it really glamorous, the women's game now, in terms of where you are and where you're at, I and think, where you want to be? Um, I think there's, there's a lot more glamour that the girls can see, which th hopefully they'll aspire to people like Kelly Smith. Mm -hmm. um, the, the, high, the profile's greater. Um, it's still on a Sunday when it's absolutely freezing and raining. The girls have to go out there and perform. If you're a top, top player and you're lucky enough to be able to get a contract, there is a lot more razzmatazz. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously, the England squad are getting recognised. They have quite a lot of duties to do, but to get paid for doing that, brilliant. You mentioned Kelly Smith. Who are the other ambassadors who have really brought the game on? Uh, for me, best female footballer, Kelly Smith. She went away to America, pro, came back. There's been some other great players. Uh, Faye White, England captain, centre-half. Mm -hmm. Going further back than that, Jill Coulthard and people like Karen Walker, mm -hmm. who, who were local girls from Doncaster. Mm -hmm. 
they were they don't sort of get the mentions, but they were there from the start. Is there a North South divide? I mean, we hear yeah. a lot about Arsenal, but Doncaster Bells as well, of course. So yeah. we're, how oh, yeah. proud are we in this yeah. region? Yeah, a Scunthorpe girl saying that Donny, but Doncaster were the team. Um, they were run themselves. They weren't attached to a men's team, and fair play. All the accolades that they won were absolutely brilliant. Obviously, Arsenal, a bigger men's team, which does help. Yeah. It does help. Money is always a problem, isn't it, Joe? We touched on this earlier on, sponsorship. It's How massive. Difficult is it? It's Sweet. massive. Um, obviously, you know, most of the girls do pay as the play, um, and w we just co always asking them for money, and it just seems so tough. Yeah. Um, but we do ask, you know, people to go out to employers, and you know, even if they just get a ball sponsored or the football boots. I used to boots, get my boots but sponsored. Yeah, but really? we have been, yeah, you know, years ago. Yeah. We've, we've been quite fortunate to get How some companies on board. Yeah. How successful have you been? Um, I mean, an IT company that I work with, that you know, they sponsored us, HBP, <laughs> Nisa in Scunthorpe, you know, they were heavily involved. And I mean, years ago when we first started, our still current chairman, who's in his 80s, so we're not he, he sponsored us, us out of his own know, money. Sort of any interest he got on in his bank account, he would throw in our bank account, and it was massive to us. You need incentive, you need inspiration, don't you, to go on. Uh, uh, where can mm. you take this team? What's What's the next step? I'd love the next step to be the, the Northern Combination League for us, which is the next step. Um, I think next season will be massive, probably two years' time. Um, but the, you never know. Girls, when you start getting successful, you will attract players attract. also. Yeah. Um, when they want to jump onto a successful team, a well-set team, you will attract players. And where are those players going to come from? Um, all over, well, I say all over, um, well, Grimsby, Scunthorpe. We've got girls that travel at the moment from Retford. Um, one girl used to travel from Wigan, um, Doncaster. Joe Moore from you know, Halifax. Joe Moore from Halifax. So, again, I think when they're happy in a team and, the, and we are successful, they are prepared to travel. Our furthest journey is Whitley Bay. So it's a long day when we okay. go to Whitley Bay. But <laughs> when people are committed, and the players are, you have to be yeah. at this level. So, so any potential centre forwards watching now thinking they might like to join the club? Yep. What's the next School step for them? and Botsford ladies, you need to come on down. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. on the website. Find out more information. Where are you again? Yep, we're on um, Botsford website um, through Lincolnshire FA. Obviously, we'll find, find us there. Good, OK, well, let's hope we can get some new players. Mandy, yeah. well, that's exactly all we've got time for this week. Great to talk to Joe and Mandy. Thank you. Uh, special thanks, of course, to Scunthorpe and Bodice for Ladies yeah. team. All the very best Thank for you. the future. Keep, Thank you. keep it going, won't you? And uh, thanks, too, to Mandy and Joe there, then, for coming in tonight. Don't forget, you can catch On The Bench Extra Saturdays, make a day, 10 a.m. here on Estuary TV. Join Rachel next week. She's back for your next helping of On The Bench. For now, though, bye-bye.